a Kenyan farmer named Aman, while tending to his land, was suddenly alerted by a distressing sound that seemed to pierce the usual tranquility of his surroundings. This sound sparked his curiosity, compelling him to investigate its origins. Having lived on this Kenyan island for many years, Aman was intimately familiar with every nuance of his fields, from the rustling of leaves to the calls of local wildlife. Yet, on this particular morning, an unusual and muffled desperate cry broke the peaceful silence. A haunting sound filled with urgency and distress, pausing his routine check of the fences. Aman tilted his head, attempting to pinpoint the direction of the cries, which seemed to emanate from the far end of the field near an ancient oak tree. With each passing moment, the cries grew more intense and desperate, compelled to find the source. He quickened his pace, wondering if it might be an injured deer, a stray dog, or perhaps something trapped. As he approached, the sounds grew louder, pushing through the tall grass. The damp blades brushed against his jeans, leaving streaks of dew. The cries became even more frantic, heightening Amon's anxiety. He had encountered injured animals before. But this situation felt alarmingly different. He slowed down, considering whether it was wise to approach a potentially wounded creature unarmed. In his eagerness to help, he might be walking right into danger. Deciding it was best to be cautious, Amon ran back to his farmhouse, grabbed his binoculars and a long rope, and hurried back towards the old oak tree. He slowed his pace as he neared the spot, the desperate cries continuing each one more urgent than the last. Peering through his binoculars, Amon could see large, dark shapes thrashing about in the mud, which splattered and obscured his view. The sheer size of the animal was intimidating. Its massive body was almost entirely submerged in thick mud. Amon's breath caught in his throat, and he turned pale as he realized the creature was an elephant. A bull elephant, and very much alive, right there in his field. His initial shock quickly turned to panic. What should he do? He had never encountered anything like this before. His farm was in a rural area, far from any wildlife reserves or zoological experts who could assist with such a large animal. In the quiet confines of Robes Island Sanctuary, encountering an elephant was an event so extraordinary it verged on the surreal. Yet, the reality was stark and distressing. The majestic creature was ensnared fighting desperately for its life. As Robe watched, his hands quivered uncontrollably while he tried to untangle the knotted rope. His mind racing to formulate a plan, the elephant's eyes, wide with fear, conveyed a silent plea for help that Robe couldn't ignore. Filled with a newfound resolve, he refused to be a passive spectator to the suffering of such a grand being. Without a moment's hesitation, Robe dashed to his barn and fired up his aging tractor clinging to the hope that it would be robust enough to alter the dire circumstances. The tractor sputtered to life, and he maneuvered it as close as he could to the trapped elephant. He attached one end of a sturdy rope to the tractor and carefully looped the other around the elephant's torso. Just behind its towering front legs, climbing back onto the tractor, Robe gingerly pressed the accelerator. The wheels churned the soft, muddy earth, Struggling under the immense weight of the elephant, the engine groaned, signaling its inadequacy for the task at hand. Despite Robe's efforts, the elephant remained mired in the mud, its exhaustion palpable in its weary eyes. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Robe knew he needed professional help immediately. He quickly reached for his phone and dialed the local wildlife rescue authorities. I need help immediately, he explained with urgency detailing the situation with precision. The operator assured him that a rescue team was already on their way and would arrive shortly. It wasn't long before the tranquility of the island was broken by the sound of approaching vehicles. The wildlife rescue team arrived, quickly assessing the challenging situation. Their leader approached Robe, nodding with understanding as he received a briefing on the predicament. The primary challenge was the terrain. The muddy ground not only prevented the rescue vehicles from getting close but also compounded the difficulty due to the elephant's immense size. The team swiftly set up additional ropes and pulleys, strategically coordinating their efforts to maximize leverage. 
they brought in a second tractor and several heavy-duty straps in hopes of enhancing their chances of a successful rescue. Despite their expertise and the sophisticated equipment, the operation was fraught with difficulty. The mud was thick and tenacious, clinging stubbornly to the elephant, which only added to the urgency as the animal's slow, mournful cries echoed around them. Robe watched, heart in throat, as the team worked tirelessly. He could see the unwavering determination etched on their faces, a mirror of his own resolve, as they battled to free the gentle giant from its muddy prison. The expressions on the rescuers' faces revealed not only determination but also a growing sense of urgency. Time was quickly running out. The initial rescue attempt had not gone as planned, and Robe's mind was a whirlwind of thoughts as he contemplated the next steps. The life of a trapped elephant was precariously hanging in the balance. As news of the elephant's plight spread throughout the community, Robe's neighbors began to arrive one by one. Farmers, ranchers, and townspeople from the surrounding areas converged on Robe's field, each bringing along tools and vehicles they thought could assist in the rescue. The field soon transformed into a bustling hub of activity as everyone united with a single goal in mind. In the muddy expanse, old tractors, aging pickup trucks, and several ATVs were positioned with precision. Ropes, chains, and straps were strewn across the ground, creating a complex network aimed at freeing the elephant. The community had rallied together to devise and implement a rescue strategy. Among the volunteers was Tom, a robust neighbor renowned for his big heart. He arrived driving a large tow truck and with a hearty clap on Amon's back, he announced optimistically, we're going to get this big guy out of here. Despite the swelling number of volunteers, the mud proved to be a formidable foe. It seemed to swallow anything that touched it, stubbornly holding the elephant captive. As the community's efforts escalated, the situation became increasingly dire. The elephant sank deeper into the mud. Hours passed, but the resolve of the crowd never faltered. Even as the elephant's condition worsened, suffering from exhaustion and dehydration, the once majestic creature was now barely moving, its eyes dull and lifeless, each breath a struggle. Dr. Hattier, a local veterinarian, arrived promptly with a portable water tank and medical supplies. She quickly set up a makeshift IV, stressing the importance of keeping the elephant hydrated. Otherwise, he won't make it, she declared solemnly. Spurred by her words, the community formed a human chain to ferry water buckets to the distressed animal. In a renewed effort, Tom's tow truck was connected to the network of ropes, and everyone pulled together in unison. The ground trembled as the truck's engine roared to life. For a moment, it seemed their efforts might succeed as the elephant shifted slightly, drawing a collective gasp from the onlookers. However, their hope was short lived as the mud tightened its grip once more. As dusk fell, the atmosphere turned somber, punctuated by the elephant's plaintive cries. Surveying his neighbors, all mud smeared and weary, Amon declared with resolve, we're not done yet, we owe it to him. Motivated by his words, the crowd redoubled their efforts. Though the elephant now lay exhausted, its cries reduced to faint whispers. As hope began to dwindle, Chicky, a seasoned wildlife ranger, emerged as a beacon of innovation amid the anxious crowd. With a tone of urgency and determination, she addressed the gathered volunteers and fellow rangers. The current bucket method is insufficient. It's crucial that we keep the elephant hydrated to ensure its survival. She proposed the idea of constructing a makeshift watering system using available materials to create a direct and continuous water supply to the elephant's mouth, thus eliminating the inefficient bucket passing. The team, led by Amon, paid close attention, their spirits lifted by Chicky's quick thinking. They promptly scavenged for materials such as PVC pipes, hoses, and duct tape. Working together, they assembled a rudimentary yet functional water delivery system. Though it lacked elegance, its potential effectiveness outweighed any aesthetic concerns. Once assembled, they positioned the makeshift pipes near the elephant's head, and Chicky carefully inserted the hose end into the elephant's mouth. Okay, turn it on slowly, she instructed. As water began to flow, the elephant took its first deep, revitalizing drink in hours. 
prompting a wave of relief and tentative smiles among the crowd. The palpable tension eased slightly as they observed a renewed sparkle in the elephant's eyes, indicating the vital role the water was playing in buying them more time. Even though the rescue operation was far from over, this was a significant advancement. As night fell, the area was illuminated by headlights and portable floodlights, keeping the temporary pipes functional to continuously hydrate the elephant, thus sustaining its strength for the ongoing ordeal. Despite the progress, the challenges persisted, the thick mud was still a formidable adversary, and the elephant's massive weight made the extraction process increasingly difficult. Tria, Mani, and the rest of the team steeled themselves for a long and demanding night. With renewed vigor from the successful implementation of the water pipes, Chiki gathered everyone to discuss the next steps. We're going to need more power and better coordination to accomplish this. She asserted, the team decided to enhance their efforts by incorporating multiple heavy-duty vehicles and robust straps to distribute the load more effectively. They introduced two additional tractors and a couple of heavy-duty pickup trucks. Positioning them strategically around the mud pit, swiftly, they secured the heavy-duty straps around the elephant. The plan was to synchronize all the vehicles in a concerted effort to pull the elephant free. Marshalling their collective strength and resources in hope of a successful rescue by dawn. In a harmonious and synchronized effort, Tom, well versed in handling heavy machinery, took the lead in coordinating the drivers. On my signal, we'll move as one unit. Remember, slow and steady wins the race, he instructed, as everyone assumed their positions. The engines began to rumble in the quiet of the night, creating a palpable sense of tension. Tom then raised his hand in preparation. All right, let's do this. On three, one, two, three, he counted, and at his cue, the engines roared to life. The vehicle started pulling in perfect harmony. The straps tensed, and the earth vibrated under their collective strength. Initially, nothing seemed to happen. The elephant was firmly stuck. But gradually, it began to shift, slowly but surely. The massive animal started to break free from the clutches of the mud. The onlookers held their breath. The only sounds filling the air were the engines straining and the straps creaking under the pressure. Just as it appeared they were making headway, one of the straps gave way with a loud snap. The sudden jolt caused the elephant to slip back slightly. Tom quickly commanded everyone to halt and reassess the situation. After tightening the straps and double-checking every connection, he rallied the team, let's try again, he declared, his determination clear in his eyes. This time, we'll get it right, with renewed vigor, the vehicles resumed their effort. Sensing the concerted effort of the rescuers, the elephant made a strong, final push. After several tense moments and a few close calls, it successfully freed itself from the mud. With one last coordinated pull, the enormous animal collapsed onto solid ground its body shaking from exhaustion as cheers erupted from the crowd. A man rushed to the side of the now motionless elephant, which was visibly drained from the ordeal. The gathered crowd, filled with awe and gratitude, watched as the majestic creature began to stabilize its breathing. They had succeeded, the elephant was free, but it was now vital to ensure it recovered from the taxing event. The night was still far from over, but for the first time, a glimmer of hope shone in the darkness. Dr. Hattier quickly took charge as the elephant lay on its side. She expertly inserted an IV line into one of its thick legs, monitoring its vital signs and assessing its overall condition. Amon and Tria stood close by as the crowd quieted, watching anxiously. Dr. Hattier also administered a mild sedative to help soothe the elephant and reduce its stress levels. We need to keep him as relaxed as possible. She explained, stress can lead to further complications, and we must avoid that at all costs. The situation remained critical, but with the expert care now being provided, the elephant's chances of recovery looked promising. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Dr. Hattier and her team doubled their efforts in caring for the elephant. Dr. Hattier gently tended to the elephant's wounds, meticulously cleaning each cut and abrasion that marred its massive body. She applied antiseptic solutions to prevent any infections that could complicate its recovery. Over time, 
The elephant began to show signs of improvement. Its breathing became more stable and rhythmic. A healthy glimmer returned to its eyes, and it even moved its trunk slightly, as if testing its own strength. The soft, rumbling sounds it made resonated through the cool night air, bringing a sense of hope to everyone around. Aman, observing from a distance, felt a surge of optimism as he watched the elephant respond to Dr. Hadir's careful treatment. Despite the progress, Dr. Hadir remained cautious. He's not out of danger yet, but he's definitely showing positive signs. She remarked to her team, we need to continue monitoring him closely and ensure he receives ample rest and nourishment. As dawn broke and the morning sun began to warm the earth, the elephant gradually regained more of its strength. It lifted its massive head and surveyed the gathering of its rescuers with a newfound energy. During her examination, Dr. Hadir noticed something peculiar on the back of the elephant's ear amid the dried mud, a small metallic tag. Intrigued, she called everyone to pause their activities. Wait a moment, everyone, she announced. After carefully cleaning the area around the tag, the grime was removed, revealing a series of numbers and a logo. Dr. Hadir's eyes widened in recognition of the emblem of a renowned wildlife conservation group. This elephant is part of a major conservation initiative, she explained with a mix of excitement and disbelief in her voice. It has been tagged as part of a genetic tracing study that has been tracking its lineage for over 20 years. Immediately, Dr. Hadir used her phone to contact the conservation group. After a few tense moments, she received a callback. The news was both startling and uplifting. The elephant had been missing for weeks and was presumed to be a victim of poaching. Feared lost forever. Upon conveying this information to the crowd, a collective gasp underscored the profound significance of their rescue operation. They had not only saved a life but also preserved a critical member of an endangered species. A.G., the conservationist on the line, provided more details. The elephant belonged to a family that was closely monitored due to its unique genetic traits. The data collected from this elephant and its relatives was crucial for understanding the genetics of the population, which in turn aided in anti-poaching efforts and the development of improved conservation strategies. The loss of this particular elephant would have been a significant blow to the ongoing conservation efforts. Thus, the successful rescue and ongoing recovery of the elephant underscored the crucial nature of their work galvanizing the team to continue their mission with renewed vigor and dedication. As the first rays of dawn painted the sky with hues of pink and gold, the elephant, heavy and majestic, made a valiant effort to stand. Initially, its attempts were shaky, its massive legs trembled, nearly buckling under the weight of its large body. Dr. Hadir, Aman, and the gathered local community watched with bated breath. Come on, big guy. You can do this, Amon murmured under his breath, his voice a mix of encouragement and hope. With a mighty heave, the elephant found its footing and rose to its full height, its presence commanding awe from everyone present. A wave of relief swept through the crowd, followed by spontaneous applause. The air buzzed with a sense of victory, a shared moment of triumph that none would forget anytime soon. Taking its first tentative steps, the elephant began to move with increasing assurance. With each step, it seemed to grow stronger and more confident. The community, maintaining a respectful distance, followed the giant creature as it made its way toward the freedom of the open field. They watched in a reverent silence, a mix of admiration and joy etched on their faces, as the elephant embraced the freedom it hadn't felt in a long time. Tears glistened in the eyes of many rescuers a testament to the emotional and physical toll the night had exacted and the relief that their efforts had not been in vain. Amon could hardly believe how a regular day had unfolded into an event of such profound significance. Witnessing the elephant regain its strength and dignity was a deeply rewarding experience for everyone who had toiled through the night. Dr. Hadir approached Amon, placing a reassuring hand on his shoulder. You did it, Amon, we all did. This is a moment of pride for all of us, she affirmed. The community had just experienced a miraculous rescue, a story that would be retold for generations, highlighting the enduring spirit of both human and animal will to overcome adversity. Dr. Hadir then addressed the crowd. 
her voice clear and proud. We've done more than just save an elephant. We've made a significant contribution to a broader conservation effort, she announced, emphasizing the event's importance in the global context of wildlife protection and the necessity of collaborative efforts to ensure a future where such magnificent creatures can thrive. For Amon, this encounter was a pinnacle of his life experiences. Living on his Kenyan farm, he had always coexisted peacefully with nature. Lions sometimes hunted his cattle, a part of the natural cycle he accepted with respect. At other times, warthogs and Thompson's gazelles roamed his fields, feasting on his crops. While these interactions led to some losses, Amon believed in the animal's inherent right to the land, perhaps even more so than his own. Being part of the rescue of such a majestic animal was not just an act of conservation. It was a profound connection to the land that had raised him and a repayment of the generosity Africa had bestowed upon him. What a magnificent conclusion to an extraordinary day. Do you have a story of wildlife and human coexistence? Share your experiences and join the conversation about conservation and the unparalleled beauty of our natural world. Have you experienced or witnessed a remarkable wildlife rescue that defied expectations? We invite you to share your stories in the comments section below. We're eager to hear from you and learn about your unique experiences. As for us, it's time to wrap up this session. We look forward to catching up with you in our upcoming video.